Yeah, rapper in a podcast, Elliot Wilson. Beat out. Beat out. What's up, baby? Chilling, man. What's good? We're going international today, man. I think it's our first time. This guy, Dave, man, from London, man. We've been trying to get this guy on a podcast all year. He's busy, man. He's in the UK. He's in America. He's everywhere. That psychodrama album still making noise. And yep. he's on that. I didn't get Top Boy. He's an top actor, boy, too. Top Boy, man. He does it all, man. He raps. He dances. He sings. I mean, come on. Hey, man. It's a rainy day in LA, man. We're going to sit down with London's own, man. Dave, man. Yes. On your rap radar podcast, sir. Send me the location. This year about vacation, flight catching, train taking. Trying to get with this man for a minute now. Yeah, he's hot out here. You can't rap in LA today, Dave. Dave. What's up, sir? Respect, brother. Can't call him Santan. That's what the girls call him. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the origin? I didn't know the, the Santan origin. That, that's that's part of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, that's that's what everyone calls you back home still. Girls, boys, it's, it's okay. I, that was just, uh, you don't have to. <laughs> Santan? Yeah, you don't have to take it on too, literally. But yeah. So yeah. that means that's the home team. If, if somebody call you that, that means they kind of really know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But everyone's getting to know you with this album, man, Psycho Drama. How, how proud are you, like, that you've seen, like, you've conquered, like, you know, for a British artist to really make it, make this impact into the American audience? Like, it's, you know, I've seen one of the most critically acclaimed albums of the year. Like, um, what, what do you make of all the reactions to Psycho Drama? It's hard to, to tell what people. I guess fully think because you don't, you know, being in London a lot of the time, you don't really get to see it. I guess being on tour here is good. You get to feel a bit more like whether it's connected in certain places or not. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it, a lot of people are showing love for it, and I guess like appreciate it and grateful. But you know, just gotta keep, just gotta keep pushing. I, it's, I don't really know, I guess, to the answer. Cause, really? Yeah, I can't. If it's not, you know, online, then yeah. how do you, what's the impact? How do you gauge it? Like, I can't really get it. Do you, do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think if you're in another place a lot, if I was here a lot and I was, this is my first time in LA this year. Oh, wow. You know, if I was in New York and LA and, or, you know, Houston, I don't know where yeah. it is. And I felt like, you know. Do you feel it in the hometown, in London? Do you feel like, that, oh, I really delivered? Because, you know, this was anticipated. You did a couple of EPs. This is like, you know, the Herald did, like, debut album, right? Like, so there's a lot of hype on that. There's a lot of outside pressures. Like, so at least in the hometown, do you feel like you delivered, to, to, especially to your fan base? Yeah, I guess so. Like, in London, there's definitely been a, a massive, you know, shift in the amount of, I guess, attention that, our whole operation is bringing this year. I think that, you know, people have definitely taken the album very well. The people that I see, it's, it's you know, what it's what they reference. I, I definitely feel like in my career, I'm living in the present, which is good because, you know, sometimes you can drop an album, but people know you for the mixtape you dropped before yeah. it or the mixtape you dropped on whatever two years ago, three years ago, but everything feels very current. It's all about the songs that are this year now on the project. So yeah, it's definitely been a reaction that I, I guess I would have dreamed for, um, especially in London, but I'm there all the time. So I can I can feel it. It's you good. say you describe this album as what it's like to be black in South London in 2019. For someone that doesn't have a passport, what does that mean? Yeah, um, I guess it's, there's a lot of different phases to the album. And I, I think, you know, that quote might have been about one track in particular, mm -hmm. in Singularity, I think the track. Black itself, yeah. yeah. It, throughout the album, it's, there's lyrics where I reference, you know, the the highs, the lows, the, the that type of thing, what it's like being a musician, being young, being black, you know, on the verge of success, mm -hmm. still being close to all the things that you grew up in and around. And I think it is, it's, 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 it's different. I, it would take, you know, hours to, to fully explain, I guess, what the Black South London experience is, right. especially yeah. where I'm just one person from one background. There's probably a mad different experience for yeah. another guy that's living in a different area, you know, but... Well, there's one line that you had, I think I, we could probably relate it to America, like the idea that you said Black is growing up around your family and making it, then being forced to leave the place you love because it's hating it. You know, I know from the American perspective, we could relate to that like so many times, like you make it out your community and then 
you know, it, it, you don't feel the love the same way and you almost have to get yourself out of that community and, and then eventually your family out of that community. Yeah, I think, you know, the, just being black in, in general, because of all the things that um, black people have gone through over, over the years, it's, it's so complex. And I think that is definitely one of the, the stranger things that I was encountering being on, you know, the cusp of everything that that are people that, you know, are for the most part, 99% of people are genuinely happy for you and want the best and such. But, you know, all it takes is that 1% of people that aren't, you know, to, to throw yeah. everything yeah. Into, into disarray. And I think that in the communities that we have, the communities that we, that we create for ourselves, um, I, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but I guess there are some individuals that would look at your success and would rather talk about the reasons that you shouldn't be there or the things that are wrong with it yeah. than the things that are right with it. And yeah. I think that that breeds a dangerous sort of environment to stay in, especially where the things that we're coming from are so, um, in certain communities, I guess, harsh, right. yeah. you know. Um, I don't know any other that sort of yeah. thing, but that's a thing, like yeah. any other cultural background per se, where that is. And I'm not saying that haters don't exist in every yeah. walk of life, or, you know, but I guess the extent to, um, in which being black is, you know, like that, it's, it's different. What inspired that song and really tackle that, the whole subject matter of, of black? Because it's one of the most powerful songs on the album. And then, it was one of the lead singles, right, of the project. Yeah, it was the first track that we put out, and I think um, I was originally I was originally listening to um, Kendrick Lamar, and then there was a song "Blood," but it's not even a song; it's just like the intro. I, I wrote it to the instrumental for "Blood," and um, I think there was, you know, coming a time where it was important to just say something on the album, to say something that um, was bigger than me, because a lot of it is very intrinsic. And even though it's track three, mm -hmm. it was one of the last tracks to be written. And a lot of the album's about myself. But I think it was about just making something extrinsic, speaking for myself, but for everyone else and using my experience of what it's like with being black to tackle the wider issues mm -hmm. in and around the community. And I think that, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different inspirations behind it, I think speaking to some friends that I have, you know, stateside, the the different struggles that they have, I guess, with um, being black, the, the somewhat loss of identity, being, you know, African-American and not exactly knowing your direct right. past and your history because of the things that, you know, mm -hmm. African-American people have faced and like a lot of the dark stuff that had happened there and just like actually thinking about what those things would do, the effects of that. Um, the division in black community right. was like a, yeah. a big inspiration behind it as well, because yeah. a lot of the time I see people um, arguing about, you know, this black and that black, or <laughs> this black is like, and yeah. you know, he, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. black people and this, but she, she, she's got a better chance at this because she's black, but she's not like this black and yeah. your black is this black and that black and <laughs> such and such. And yeah, he likes that black, but not this is too <laughs> light, but too yeah. And yeah, yeah. It, like, I also like how you play with saying it's a, it's a sour flavor or, and it's a sweet flavor. Like you play on both sides of it. Yeah, because right? yeah. it's a soup. Like I, I, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. And I think the, the parts of it that make it tough, that make it um, so, so, you know, I don't know what the exact word is, but yeah, the, the darker parts of being black inspire the sweeter parts as well. And you, yeah. you look at, you look at just the music, you look at the soul, you look at the food, you look at the culture, all of these things, I guess, like their inception and their birth, where they came from being, you know, probably a struggle somewhere down the line, I guess. No, I'm pretty sure that blues music that come from, yeah. you know, a place of pain. pain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I, I think that that you, 
Um, that's why it was towards the end that I referenced it being the sweetest um, the flavor, time. because it's like, you can't get the sweetness of being black without like the, everything that had created it. I think that, you know, I wouldn't say that the black experience exists completely inside of our pain, but it's, you know, mm. definitely a contributing factor to yeah. what it is today, the landscape of being black yeah. today, and, you know. One last thing on black, uh, I heard when you went, released it back home on BBC Radio, there was people saying they were offended, like it caught a little controversy until some DJs defended it and said, you know, this song should be played. What did you make of all that? Yeah, I think that like, you know, it's what I expected to some extent. Like, the UK outside of London is completely different. Um, you have a few, you know, places that are, you got your London's, Birmingham, Manchester, Bristol, Nottingham, Leeds, Sheffield, ETC, it goes on. You have your cities where it's like, you know, and then when you get into rural areas and whatever, like, the, it, they might not be as familiar or accustomed to, you know, the culture of rap culture, black culture, ETC, just, not just black, just different cultures in general. So hearing that, I think they, the people that were outraged or whatever it is, just didn't understand. I don't think that they understood what the point of the song was. I think the black, if I say, oh, black is beautiful, black is excellent, that doesn't mean that I'm saying that everything else isn't. Right. It just means that I'm saying that this is. And, you know, that's just, that's just how it is. It's, I've, I've never understood why people take offense to me celebrating and being proud of where or what I'm from, what I represent. Mm -hmm. If I, you know, went on a song and I said that everything else is this. Putting every, anything else down. Yeah, yeah and, that, and down. that was my thing. And if I was one of those people that done that, then, you know, maybe I understand. But where I was just celebrating black culture, I think that people just heard the first four lines and they just thought, <laughs> you know what, like, let, me, yeah. let, let me start from, you know? Yeah. Thematically, did you always have this idea of opening up the album with the therapist and talking about your insecurities and things like that? Yeah, um, that was something that came together on one of the last days, actually like placing all the words in and getting a dialogue and putting it together. Like, it was always one of the driving forces behind the album because it was just like, I just didn't want to just have a collection of right. tracks. I wanted to have a narrative, somewhat self-discovery and I think if you listen to the album as 11 separate tracks yeah. and then you listen to it as a whole, it's just two completely different things. Right. Um, the tracks are meant to be aware of each other. You know, track four is meant to lead on to track five. And they're meant to- Talking about sequel same day? Yeah, yeah, you know, they're meant to, they're meant to, yeah, <laughs> live in the same world and yeah. get each other. And I reference other songs and songs. So it's not, I guess, one of them albums that's just, yeah independent of that, I think. I wanted to have a concept and a narrative, but still have something that on its own could achieve some level of commercial yeah. success. How do you look at people that haven't heard it, the concept? What is the concept and story that you are telling? Because I feel like it's more as much about you as also your brother, right? Yeah, I think that um, everything that my brother had gone through and that everything around that situation had brought what was required of him to to do where he was in a place called Grendon was um, self-discovery and looking back at what made you do the things that you've done, who you are, why you are that way. And I think that I just decided to, to go on my own journey doing the same thing as to what made me who I am. Just a bit more self-discovery and I think that like, in doing that, I learned about myself while writing it out, while hearing it, while creating it. Um, and yeah, that was the basic driving force, the concept behind the album, just to learn about myself. And I think for other people that are listening, if you could listen to me learning about myself, and maybe learn something about yourself, it, that would have been it being a success. But trying to make people feel like it's okay to go out and question you, yourself, what you do, how you 
come to the place that you are. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like this when I wake up. I'm 27, for example. I'm 31. I'm 45. I feel as if my life has gone like this and like this. These are the things that led up to this moment in my life. Right. This is how I could potentially change it. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to go. I, I think that journey I had for 55 minutes, whatever the running time of the album was, is what my little snippet of yeah. growing up between the ages of yeah. what, whatever. Was it tough being so vulnerable on the records? Because you're putting out a lot of family business and you know, showing a lot of vulnerability. Yeah, to some extent it was hard to to vocalize, but I had to, you know, I had to let myself know if if I'm writing and it doesn't feel as if I'm pushing it, or if it doesn't feel as if this is controversial or mm. as if I might get in trouble for saying this, then I don't think I'm pushing it enough. Mm. I, you I'm, challenge yourself that way as a writer. Yeah, I know if I've said something, whether it's, whether it's good, because I'll have to like, ask someone that I'm with or ask one of my friends or family and say, do you think it's too much for me to say? Do you think right. it's too much for And when you're pushing yourself and those are the lines that you're crossing or not crossing, whether it's family business, whether it's your own personal life, whether it's what you're saying and the way that you think and feel, mm -hmm. if you know that, yeah, I've got this feeling of I'm taking it far, mm -hmm. at least you're you're pushing that envelope because right. you can you can be safe. It's, it's it's pretty easy to be safe when you're rapping and just be um <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you, yeah you know you can go in this in a booth and rap about yeah. whatever you it is. You just put a want. clean sixteen together, yeah. but you, you, yeah you yeah. Can, I think what is more like rewarding is hearing something and then listening back to a verse and thinking, ah, oh, that's actually how I feel. That's crazy. It's, so, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a weird, it's a weird feeling. I felt that when I listened to drama, you say you lost 30 grand uh, with, with your family. Yeah. Like that's based off a real experience. Yeah, that whole, that whole verse, that whole um, section, yeah, it's real. Um, and I remember writing it and thinking, ah, oh, I don't know how I'm gonna explain this to everyone that I've just said this, but I think yeah. because it was happening, what well, had happened so close to the time it was at the time, I just didn't know how to say anything else. Uh, with with family, certain things come out, certain things don't come out, you know. And you get over, you fight, you you go through whatever it is. Yeah. But my responsibility at that time was to say to the world everything that was going on with me inside of me and holding back mm. one point or holding back some stuff that is such an important part of the way that I'm talking. Yeah. That's just nuts. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To do that and to make an album for however long you're working on it for seven, eight, nine months straight, a year, and then you're coming up to the final hurdle, you're writing an outro, and this is how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. You're really feeling this way, you can write for four minutes and you can just take out a line and not tell the world, or you can just go all the way and leave it all there. I feel like I would have looked back on it five, six years in the future. I might not have remembered what was going on. I might have, but I probably would have regretted not vocalizing how I felt at any given point. Yeah. Because now, I, at least if I'm 25, we can look back at his family and sit down and laugh and say, yeah, this happened or that happened, or not laugh, I, I don't know. Right. But at least I would have said it, and it would have been there on the yeah. bottom. Having like your older brother incarcerated, like it seemed like you, and, and the other brother was incarcerated too, like somebody you had to become the man of the house in a sense, or the provider in a sense. Like, what was that transition like for you? I was just making music and, and then, and everything just started happening, really. Mm. It's, it's, it's a weird transition. You're just making music, you're just rapping, you're just singing, yeah. and all of a sudden, it's going well. And then, just time just flies. I wasn't sitting down and thinking, oh yeah, like, this, yeah, this is, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It reminds was, me of like the OVO in your chest. Like I feel like the first time a lot of uh, 
us folks recognize you was when you had the record Wanna Know and all of a sudden Drake jumped on that record. Like looking back at that now, like how pivotal was that to your career and what was that moment like when he just added this verse to the record and sort of took off? It was, cra- it was crazy. It was one, <laughs> like I can't, it was one of the craziest things ever. That felt so alien and you know, he's a worldwide renowned superstar, yeah. one of the greatest ever to do it. And I think for a long time, it didn't even feel real. I felt like I won the lottery. Mm. Mm. It was mad weird. I remember like, sitting down and songs not out yet. You don't, I, I, I didn't know music to, to any real level, the business side of it. I didn't know anything. It just feels that like I'm not necessarily a crazy lucky person. I wouldn't mm. go into a class and be the guy that won a raffle. Yeah. And got a <laughs> I wouldn't like, yeah. you, you know. Yeah. I was to get it the rough way. A crazy yeah. lucky person. Yeah, yeah. But with all the music that was happening at the UK, mm. there was a lot of good songs at the time in 2016. By the way, there's a lot of good music. Yeah. But for that song to just be chosen at random. I felt like, yeah, I won the lottery. That was the luckiest I've ever felt in my entire life. Mm-hmm. Just how have you stumbled on it? How have you heard it? Yeah. Didn't understand. Did it help like, give you more confidence that I can, I can really make it in this music business? And yeah. I have to continue making music. I can't just like disappear off yeah. the base to earth. Um, weird sort of this, you, you never know what to expect. You, you think, when you're like, sitting down before the song's out, yeah, this song's about to come out. I know this is going to come out, but I don't know exactly what it's going to sound like because I haven't heard it. Mm-hmm. I just hope that it sounds, that it sounds interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, I know it's going to sound good because <laughs> it's, it's straight. I don't know what he's, I don't know what he's going to do. Like, yeah, yeah. Is he just going to use the beat? Yeah. Am I going to be in the background doing harmonies like a back and forth? <laughs> and, like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Ha- what happens next? Right? Yeah. Am I ever gonna have to work again? I'm pro- like, yeah. I'm sitting down thinking to myself, like, <laughs> I, like, you know, I, I could have been online looking for Lamborghinis or whatever. Like, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just sitting down thinking, like, right, <laughs> I've gone absolute. Because in my head, like, at that time, what I was, um, it's 2016, so yeah. I think I just turned 18. Wow. All, all I've seen is, um, you see, you see, back in 2016, 2015, them years there, American rappers, they looked crazy, <laughs> crazy, yeah. crazy rich and crazy distant. Mm-hmm. Not saying that they don't look crazy rich now, yeah. but yeah. you would look at an American rapper and think, what, like, oh my, it is the mo- it's, you Excess. can't, yes. yeah. yeah. And, you know, obviously, Drake's Canadian, but yeah. he, Rises. Dominates yeah. the, U, the 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 American North America. U, yeah, so yeah. I didn't actually understand the mechanics of everything until later on, years later, and I realized that okay, like this is how this works and that, and like streaming is just coming mm-hmm. into play, and it was a real transitional time for music in mm-hmm. general. So. Those years were super duper interesting, but it just gave me a massive, massive, massive head start. And, you know, can't be grateful enough to, 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 to him and the team for the way that they've handled that song and everything afterwards and yeah. looked out for us. Because it seemed like you maintain a great relationship, but you remain independent. It's like you signed with OVO, you still your own independent force, but there's obviously still that mutual respect as peers. Yeah, of course. And, um, I think with everything, I I didn't know myself yet as a musician what I was gonna put out the sound that I was gonna make, what I represented. And I think that I just, even now, still need a bit of time to find that out and to, to work out what I'm bringing to the table, who am I as a musician. But yeah, their whole entire movement from from the music to, to the clothing, to the people behind it, to the radio, to, what they're doing in, in film and television, I respect super duper highly, and I, yeah. I, I watch out for it. You know, they're, right. they're amazing people. Because it seems like Drake's co-sign obviously changes everything, but for some reason, I feel like a shift came about when Hangman dropped. 
Like, that's my favorite record from you. And even the video, for some reason, it's simple. It's you and your friends, but it resonates with a lot of people. What is it about that record that you feel like people fuck with? I think Hangman was um, it's definitely one of, you know, my most important songs coming at the time that it came out. And it was a, a big um, shift because I spoke to um, a few of my friends at the time, the video, and we were just, we were just really, really focused on making sure that we deliver the right things to the people with, with everything in Hangman, from the instrumentation mm. to the words, mm -hmm. to the video, the entire experience that you get when you hear what I'm saying. Yeah. And I think, like you mentioned in the video, Everything is important. If I've got the lyrics of Hangman with a polished video mm. in a studio somewhere in the countryside and it looks clean and it looks expensive, the words don't resonate the same way. If I do it outside of my, my area or if, I, if, it's, if my friends aren't with me in a singular, it, it doesn't resonate the same way because everything that I'm saying is it's an experience. And it's, for some people, you have to understand and see that we're here inside of this. As I'm saying this to you, the message is coming live and direct from the source and the center. And I think at the time with a lot of the things that were going on around me and around the music and the way that people were speaking, I think people forget, you know, Hangman, I was what? It's 2018, so I'm 20, but we're there, like me, my I'm, I'm rapping this in music video and whatever, but that's our home. We're, we're living mm -hmm. yeah. in Streatham. Yeah. And this is what I'm talking about and this is what I'm saying, but it's, it's just the reality of it. You can yeah. see it. Like, it's, not, it's not strange. We're, we're, we're here. Look, here's the video. Film it. You say, like, London is cursed. The city's got a problem. Like, for a person that's never been there, like, what do you mean by that? It's, it's upside down. At, at places and at times, and it's very easy to get drawn out, to get put into situations or put into circumstances that you shouldn't be in, in London. Mm. As I can imagine, it is mm. anywhere here, right. you know, parts of whatever state you go to in America, that's, I guess, a universal thing. But London in particular, the city in the UK, I was just talking from my experience of, you know, it can go left so quick. Mm -hmm. and, and in that time, in that period of time, 2018, it's finding ourselves in more situations and more things that would have inspired lyrics like that mm -hmm. than usual. So I think gotcha. that me just commentating about what was going on at the time, I just said, you know, London was cursed. Because right. at entry level, at entry point, it's, it doesn't take much for things to, to get heated, for yeah. things to escalate, you know. Um, but you also have this song, Psychodrama Straight Am, dedicated to your hometown. Uh, what is it like over there? Like, oh, in Stratum. Stratum, excuse me. No, Stratum. it's okay. So, no, I, I wouldn't expect you to be I'm on the no set. fly list now. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, Stratum's like, it's an interesting one. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty big area, but it's pretty small at the same time. Um, there's some different parts to it, but for the most part, Streatham is it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I, I, I like it. We, we call it home. You know, there's, there's, um, like I said, different sections and areas. I wouldn't say that Streatham itself is just one. Cause you could have Streatham Vell, Streatham Common, Streatham Hill, um, ETC, Main Streatham, where the Tesco is, and Every, you know, every one of them might have their own different factions of people that are from, from there. And it's one of them places in London where it's, um, it's on a long road. A23 is just all on, on a long road. So it's like, you can drive straight mm. through. A lot of people use Streatham to get to, to other areas. But yeah, it was a good place to grow up. Um, and yeah, I, 
I, I embrace it. It's, it's, it's good to be able to, to embrace where you're from. I think sometimes for some people in London, it's hard because where you're from or where you're, where you're born, if you scream by it and you say, this is where I'm from and I'm proud, that can come with a whole world of problems. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, just insert random area from North, East, West London or South London. You say, oh, I'm from here. Yeah, I'm from here, I'm from here. Mm. People from insert other random places be like, oh, you represent here. I got beef with here. people on this side of town. Yeah, and yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. Mister, you're Mister this area, but right. hold on, like, so I think Streatham being being able to just be proud of where I'm from, and you know, there's obviously little different things going on in whatever area, but it's not necessarily like one of those areas right. that sparks outrage the moment yeah. that you mention it in conversation. Good, so yeah, yeah it's, it's home for us. Right. Well, now that you're like this big fish in a small pond, what's that transition like coming out here in America and getting embraced and loved? Oh yeah, I'm. We bro, saw you tear I'm, down the New York show, man. We I'm, saw you tear I'm that a, down. In, in in America, I'm a, I'm a small fish in in a very 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 big pond. Listen, so man. I'm like, I went to the show in New York. A lot of people can't fill that venue. Boy, get the crowd rocking like that, <laughs> man. Right. Thank you. I, um, I yeah, I appreciate it. New York. Also, I would think hearing your music that maybe it'd be like, you know, just calm and measured and not have the rah rah element of the last show. But I feel like you you still got the crowd jumping, going crazy. The high it's high energy. Yeah, I think I, maybe if you listen to your album, you may not expect that to see this, such yeah. a level of high energy at the show, but it is high energy throughout the whole show. Because uh, I guess for for the stuff in between the albums, a lot of the songs are singles. A lot of the songs are just like up and single. And I think that that's why the album was, I was okay with it being so much slow, so mm. much deeper, because I know that in the time leading up to that, I had released so and so and so and so, and after that, I released the songs that are that are up, and the balance is perfectly maintained. But yeah, in that one body of work, that story for the live show for performance, it might not be the best to to just run through 55 minutes of, of super deep music to people that want to see you in in, yeah. in the show in New York. Yeah. But I, I, it's 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 very 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 strange, you know, coming to America and speaking to people and what we're doing and the sound that we're trying to bring is slowly traveling over mm. and you know with the right with the right people with the right amount of time put in dedication i think we can start to change the way that everything is seen and heard but it just it requires all of those things it requires you know the best music yeah. people that are willing yeah. to come over to tour people that are willing to to embrace different audiences, to try new things. And I was gonna go to, to your point, like why do you think it's been so hard for UK artists to break here in America? A lot of UK artists can't get visas. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I don't wanna say anything from the American government before I get mine revoked, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got, I got, I got. Santander, you're always welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you it's not gonna knock on wood. So, a lot of British artists can't get visas. It's tough for them. Yeah. Um, and then the artists that can get visas are artists that do, you know, have the ability to travel. It's, it's as if, you know, there's a lot of unfinished business with people in the UK. The UK is a massive market for people in the UK. They want to conquer it, you know, like Kano said in an interview the other day, a lot of people don't necessarily look at America and think this is something that I aspire to, to conquer or, mm. or whatever mm. because... You don't even think it's an option like that. Or well, possible, right? I think some people might not think it's possible. Some people might not really care at this point in time as to whether it is possible or not because it requires a lot of... It's pretty... It's a, it's a big headache, I guess. When you... If you're someone that is doing whatever at a certain level and you're from... You could be from anywhere. UK, France. Spain and you're up here and you're doing, you know, whatever it is to a high level in your city and you have to go somewhere else and you're no one again. But like you were no one two years ago right. where you were and that, that didn't feel too good. But now you're someone mm. like you don't, a lot of people don't want to be known again. Mm. And I understand that. 
because you're working on whatever it is that you got here. Mm. You got to, in your head, you got to keep up with being someone where you are. Right. You want to be a bigger someone. Mm -hmm. You're not worried about the fact that you're no one somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, growing everywhere at the same time, for me, is vital. I think that yeah. that is super duper important. So when we're touring America and I'm getting messages and people are saying, you know, come to Atlanta or come to Houston <laughs> and people care enough to message and just send a DM and say, on your next tour, make sure that you add San Francisco or on your next tour, make sure that you add Chicago or why do you always go to Toronto and never Vancouver or come to Montreal? I see it all and I think if there's people out there, I know what it's like to to want to to ride for someone else's music and tell the people around you, listen to so and so, listen to this, listen yeah. to that, but like they're never there or they don't give you the tools to back up. Mm -hmm. And I think that if there is people that are trying to spread the music and spread the movement and what it is that we're doing, it's only right I go to the cities and give them yeah. the chance to see me live, the chance to bring their friends, yeah. the chance to have a good night. And that's what the touring and the show is all about, just maintaining that growth and yeah. And just keeping it going because yeah, it's, it's 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 tough down here. It's a continent. It is it is a continent. Yeah, you do manage to sneak in some turn up on the album like location with Burner Boy. Like, how did you find that balance? And how, is it fun when you get to make a record like that amongst all the heavy subject matter? Yeah, so um, it's a strange one because that track was just it was always an idea, and I never created that type of thing and thought, oh, this is it album like such. It was. For a while, we were looking for a song and a single for that album. And I was going to sessions and trying to create a single, but that song was just there mm. in a different form. Mm. And I um, worked on it with a producer called J5. Um, it's very, very, very interesting, just the way that the song came about. Um, J and I were freestyling on some chords um, put some chords down and Burner Boy just freestyled his whole part instantly. Mm. That he was, it did not take that man long at all. <laughs> like five, 10, 15 minutes. Like yeah. he was just, I don't know how he done that. I, I'm still in shock, amazed from <laughs> like how that quick yeah. that process was for him. Yeah. Like his part of the song was done. And then we just had a template for a beat. And then Jay just said, yeah, I'm going to take this away and I'm going to work on it. And he did. And then I just wrote a verse. Because I had two verses originally. They were kind of deeper. And the song was a bit deeper. As you can tell from Burner Boy's hook, it's still somewhat dark. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, my dog's in probation. And oh, mm -hmm. I was down, but I'm headed to the top right now. Mm -hmm. The instrumentation was kind of different. It was a different vibe. And then, yeah, I had two verses. They were deep. And um, I remember playing them to people. And, they were like, yeah, the song's got potential. And I said, you know, what do you guys think? My manager said, that, oh, he, he, um, he doesn't like, he thinks that I could do a better first verse. I can contextualize it more. <laughs> Jack and Benny over there, one yeah, of those guys? Yeah, it was Benny. Benny? Benny, 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 Benny challenged yeah. you to contextualize it, my brother? I was, I was looking, I was thinking, like, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? I said, oh, yeah, you can contextualize your verse even more. So I never... In, originally, the first verse never started like, oh, send me the location. That was like the sixth verse that I had written. Yeah. Then, yeah, it was like contextualized. I was like, all right, cool, fuck it. I'm going to contextualize all, all the way. I was just like, <laughs> send me the location. You know when, when you get like one of them questions on, a, yeah. on an essay and you have yeah. to like, re, like repackage the question in your essay or like in an interview or <laughs> someone would be like, oh, so how do you feel this morning? And you'd be like, oh, so I feel this morning. And you have to like say yeah. what... The Same thing I said before. Answer, yeah. That's why I done with the first verse and was just yeah. like, oh, send me the location. It took a long time to get through the Leslie track, man. Yeah. So you like contextualized the hell out of that song, man. <laughs> six verses, 11 minutes. That took me a while. Like, the storyline's so intricate. Yeah. It's like six verses. Like, that's just, that's like his own album. Can you explain yeah. Leslie? <laughs> yeah. I, with that track, there was a story that I had that I wanted to get to. And it was a story that I wanted to tell, and I wanted to tell two stories. But the second part of the story where Ruel was singing, um, and she was talking about a child without a name and such, was the first part that I had. And then it was about telling, a, you know, a, a story that's true enough and accurate enough to what it is that I'm speaking about. 
to really give that second part of the story the context that it needed while also telling the song. So with A Child Without a Name, which is the, the second part of the song, which is what it's split into, where um, Ruel's talking about, I guess, miscarriage and, and the loss of a child, ETC. There was a whole like bunch of um, negatives that she was, like paradoxes. That's what, that's what it was all about, yeah, yeah. basically paradoxes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like st stuff that feels impossible or feels like it shouldn't be. You know, um, I used to study philosophy and they had um, that, that triangle. You know the triangle that Palace used in their logo? Yeah. Or the staircase, I can't remember what the right. staircase was called. Mm -hmm. You know the staircase that had an inception mm -hmm. where you go around the staircase in a square? Yeah. Um, that was, stuff like that was the inspiration behind the imagery for a child without a name, just describing how wrong the feeling is of, you know, losing, I guess, a child before it happens to miscarriage and then telling the stories a story that led up to that, that then, I guess, if you fully understood the song, made the end of the song yeah. as powerful as it could be, while yeah. also telling its own story about domestic violence and, mm -hmm. I guess, more so than domestic violence, the loss of character, that stuff like that brings, the emotional trauma. I think that that's why it, someone says, like, wow, wow, why did it take 11 minutes? Why is the song so long? I think fitting in the, the, the normal story arc of a film, like beginning, middle, problem, resolution, and like that is, okay, yeah, cool. Might take you four minutes, might take you three minutes, depending on the tempo of the song. But adding the layers of, like you said, I guess, intricacy and yeah. telling stories within stories given Easter eggs, given you things that, I guess, towards the end of the song, yeah, yeah. make you think, I should have known this from the start, and... The can of pops yeah. up. Like. Yeah, 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 like, <laughs> just, 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 yeah, I guess yeah. doing all of those things that make the story feel like you've heard something that is completely cohesive yeah. was definitely the challenge, and you can imagine in an 11-minute story where you're rapping for every line, there can be plot holes, yeah, there can yeah. be this, there could be that, and just going through every single one and making sure, it's like a riddle, it's like one of them weird little yeah. games. You say something and then you explain it and you're saying, oh, yeah, like this. But then what you're saying three minutes down the line, why has someone done this when two yeah. minutes ago they were yeah. here? And why you have to then explain this situation three minutes earlier into the song. So when you do explain it yeah. at seven minutes or four, it doesn't feel like you've just randomly thrown this in for the sake. Yeah, right. And like all of that stuff. And obviously the story being, you know, based on true events and a true story. Yeah. Which is you touched on the outro, you refer back yeah, to it. Yeah, in drama. Yeah. It does give me enough of a basis to be able to like not be struggling with just fabricating, you know, just 11 minutes worth of a story, but also changing it enough and like being respectful to enough to the situation yeah. to use my creative license to deliver it to the people and the way that it is um yeah that's why it was super yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, it's it's great, though. <laughs> yeah. will we get a visual for that <laughs> um we've been planning we've been planning a visual i've been planning to do something um but i just keep getting so so the cool. The bags keep coming in, man. Jack and Bay's like, the bag's ready. We got to do his own show. visuals on Top Boy. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, R.I.P. Yeah. to your character. You got <laughs> murked in Top Boy? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> How did that role even come about as Modi? Um, they, I got the Daily Offender, Crazy East Ender. Yeah, you know, shout out to Jay Huss for that lyric. That's a, that's a Jay Huss lyric. I don't know if you guys listen to Jay Huss. Jay Huss, I'm familiar with Jay Huss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's He's um, on Disaster too on the album. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the lyrics from one of his um, unreleased songs that I was listening to a lot when I was filming. It just sounded like something my character would say. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, um, I auditioned. They asked me to audition for a different role. Audition, then again, audition for that role. I did get it, and because the world of acting, just like any other world, football, music, 
what it would seem to someone that's outside of it. It felt so mystical. Mm. I auditioned. I didn't know if I did good. I didn't know if I did bad. I didn't know why I got the call up. What was the, <laughs> you know, I, when they're saying, yeah, like, you got the role. I, are you guys being serious? Do, do you, am I just making a cameo? Am I like an extra? Does, is this? I, I didn't really get it. Um, for a long time, I was, you know, massively grateful for the opportunity, but I guess because I was coming from um, a musical position and standpoint, and Top Boy was obviously so big, yeah. I didn't really feel like I belonged there mm. because, I don't know, um, it's hard to explain, but you're just, that imagines you're sitting at a read through. You know, Kano's there, mm. Asha D's there, mm. and you know, Bashi might not be there because he's in America, and Michael Ward's there, and everyone there sees and actors. Like, mm. And you, I know, yeah. looking at these guys, you guys. Well, you was on the table read? Yeah. The, yeah. Mm. Now, you guys are meant to be here. <laughs> like, yeah, you guys are yeah. meant to be here. Yeah. Other actors, I don't know if, I don't even know if you act, but you must act. <laughs> I, do, you, do you get what I'm saying? But how'd you prepare for the role? Because you killed it. Thank you. I, I, taking that into consideration, and obviously having that on my shoulder, knowing and being nervous, feeling as if I don't want to let the people that are watching me down, I tried to just get into the mind of a character. I met with a character that he was based on, and I just thought, I want to take it very, very far left from what my character was based on, what they want me to play. I'm going to put elements myself in there, but mm. just take it really left and just not do the the go-to thing. Because yeah. at first, uh, me and Reynaldo, mm -hmm. who was the director for the first um, couple of episodes, first few, he said, just try and come a bit different, maybe get a bit of a distinctive look to you, such mm -hmm. and such. So I went, tried to get long hair braids for the thing, mm -hmm. but someone else in the thing already had braids and they didn't want me to have braids. So when I got to there on the first day of set, I remember taking off the hair that I had just spent a day putting on. Um, but that's like how I was that down to just go and just completely change my image. And then when that was gone and I was back to like my normal short hair, which I have underneath this hat, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, I just knew not everyone that is crazy or super duper dangerous is um, super macho, bravado, etc. Right. Okay, was a, a lot of the time had a high pitched streak to his voice. Mm -hmm. He was kind of young, more so annoying. Yeah. I think he was an asshole, but you liked him. You wanted him to stay on screen. Yeah, like, he <laughs> he's, he was annoying, but in a, a way that was kind of addictive to yeah. watch because there weren't really many characters like that. And the more that you see other people acting, the more that you see other people on set mm -hmm. and what their characters bring to the table, the more that you know, all right, I want my character to be this guy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, you know, some clone of a guy that already exists on a show and is here for, you know, 10, 20 minutes yeah. each episode. I don't want to just do something that someone else has done. So I definitely tried to make him a bit softer in terms of he's still a villain, but mm -hmm. yeah, he's kind of articulate, kind of yeah. got a higher pitch voice. If he wasn't in a life of crime, he could probably be, you know, doing a pretty decent job. He could be in law or something. You wanted like to root for him though, despite being the bad guy. Like, and when you got killed and I was like, ah. Yeah. You cried, beat out, you cried. It was, <laughs> it sucked. Cause he was like a, a character you wanted to keep seeing reoccurring. Like. Yeah, and I think I, I didn't even, as a character, get into my stride. It also seems like it's part of your real life because you, the way you were brought up, you know, you were close to your mom. She kind of shielded you away from the streets. Like, what did she think of everything that's going on with your career and success? Yeah, like my mom, my mom's, you know, super duper happy. She's, she, I guess we're all just grateful mm -hmm. for, for what is going on at this current point in time. She's over the moon. I, I just try and make sure that I keep doing what I can. Yeah. I keep focused. Um, just 
just stay out of stay out of anything that I don't need to be in. Uh, listen to my mum because she's she's right a lot of the time. But this is something that she might not have imagined when she yeah. wrote the the book of my life before I was born and said that yeah. this is the life that I was going to lead. Right. But I, I'm it's just it's just how the the cookie crumbles sometimes. Sometimes you just have to sit down and say I've got three children and one of them is just like a creative guy that doesn't have any attention towards things that are um, not involving the arts, the, the, yeah. that type of thing. And, yeah. you know, I wasn't an athlete. I'm just a music guy. I'm just a, <laughs> I'm just, that's yeah, Mercury just, Prize winner though. Oh, that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. you brought on, yeah. That was the one you brought on stage, right? Yeah. yeah was one of the, it was, that yeah. seemed like an emotional moment for you. Yeah, and, definitely. And the family. Definitely. And I always say, I guess, because that award in particular, uh, it meant so much to everyone. That's why it further meant more to me because when you're doing something and it's the first time for you, it's one thing, but when it's the first time for everyone, mm. um, it's definitely big. My team, friends, family, yeah. my management, it's like, this is our first nomination together yeah. for this. this is, it's at the same time for all of us. It's, it's a proud moment for all of us and it's good to know that you know, something that we've all put so much time into can be rewarding for, for all of us. My mum was always pushing me. She was obsessed with that award. I used mm. to think... Oh, she wanted you to get that specific award? Yeah, she she had this conspiracy theory. She had this, <laughs> she had this theory Moms that... Moms love a conspiracy she, theory. They love a conspiracy. My mum was always telling me, make sure you get my tickets, make sure you get my tickets. I'm like, I'm going to get your tickets, man. Like, I've got them. Like, I was telling her, like, of course. And, in my head, of course my mum's going to be a... When she, when she came, she was dressed up and she was ready and she was um, excited for the moment. We were all nervous. I was very nervous. I felt sick. And, yeah. and yeah, they just announced it. I don't remember everything was just like mad loud. Instantly, yeah. it was like... It was like, he said Dave, and it was like... It's like someone threw a flashbang, like <laughs> a grenade or something, like yeah. just a lot of shouting. And then I was under a lot of people's arms and I was getting pushed. <laughs> And then, boom, I was just on stage. I was just giving a speech. And then my mum was just on stage. My mum just took the award. <laughs> she held it up. You haven't seen it since. <laughs> I, I, do you know what? It's in Jack's house, isn't it? <laughs> Has mom stopped working yet? Um, do you know what? My mum my mom just works because... Like, she don't she, want to retire. She She's just trying to retire her, right? She's yeah. like, she likes, doing she it. Likes, she likes to work. I think without the work, that my mum does, especially because she's giving back to the community and the work she does. Oh, okay. um, it's rewarding. Man. I, I don't know what one, if I didn't, money is just one of those weird things, right? Even if you did have all the money in the world, you could retire, like, you'd find something to do yeah. every day. Some people work and it's like, if I could just quit right now, I'd just quit. I don't think that my mum looks at it that way. There's certain jobs that my mum's quit. My mum doesn't work all the jobs that she used to work. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you're doing what you like to do, then yeah, yeah I think there's one job that she works and she, you know, close to her clients and that type. She, I think she, she enjoys it. I don't, I tell her, I don't think you need to work, but yeah. she's, she's, she, um, she's still looking at it and she's being a mum. She would happily turn around. Out, leave the house and she'll say like, oh, do you need, do you need any money? And she, she'd give me a five pound note or a 10 pound note. And I was tell her like, <laughs> you know, I'm lying here. Like, you're living, you're living in the past, but I, but, but I am going to take this five pound note because I have no money on me. And I have no cash. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a good dynamic. But um, I, my mum lives, you know, super duper humble. She doesn't live beyond her means and I try and, encourage her to, you know, do more if you want to take a holiday, if you want to get this yeah, back. But yeah. I, I don't think she's very materialistic. Yeah. She always says, like, you know, I don't go out and get the Balenciagas and such <laughs> as the way she pronounces it. But um, at the same time, though, I think my mum does love it secretly because, you know, when she was on stage and when my mum, like, when, she, when she's taking pictures and stuff, like, my mum, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I might go somewhere and my mum has been there before me and I would have heard through the grapevine that my mum's gone around and told everyone, like, mm -hmm. yeah, like, my son does this or that. Yeah. And it's good to know that she's just proud, I guess, that, yeah, she, that she feels 
like we're doing something good, our family is here and we're known for good. This is a positive impact that we're making. Yeah. I think that that is, I guess, every parent's dream. African parents especially, they, they just want something to, to you know. Yeah. Just staying strong, man. One of the, before we get out of here, one of the lines I thought was strong in there too, you said, I fell in love with optimism. Yeah. Like what inspired that when you, that line? My relationship with emotions is what I was uh, describing. And I think, weirdly, even though emotions are the building blocks of relationships, your relationships with your emotions are what keep everything in tandem. So yeah. stuff like regret, mm. your relationship with a feeling of regret. You could be someone that is, you know, the other day, my brother said that, you know, sometimes my mum can be pro-stress, but at being pro-stress, doesn't mean that you like being stressed out. It's just like, it is something that allows itself, you allow it to perpetuate. I think being someone that's like pro-regret is someone that likes living in the past or likes being regretful. Like you, you don't enjoy it. You don't necessarily like it, but that's like, it's kind of like what you do. And when I said, yeah, I fell in love with optimism, I think I just meant like, I, became someone that that was my go-to yeah. feeling, emotion, mm. being optimistic, being bright, looking forward, like being a positive energy to be around. Because yeah. when, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm a negative energy, like when, I'm, when I'm sad, when I'm quiet, like bring everything down. Mm. I think like yeah. you'll know like I'm, it's, very, it's very difficult to be happy in a room where I'm sad. Mm -hmm. It's just weird. Some people can do that, yeah. but I had to get out of that and try and like, even days where I wasn't feeling necessarily like that, just be bright and outward. And yeah. as you can probably tell, like I talk a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that was, that was yeah. it. Just, yeah. yeah. Push yourself to yeah. get there. Well, see, one of my favorite lines was on Cycle. You say you learned you could judge a nigga by the woman he curves. I like that. Nice. No, it's, 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 <laughs> I like that. Put that on a t-shirt. I like that. Yeah, no, no. Uh, it's, 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 um, do you know what? Yeah, where did that client come from? Who drew me out? Oh, I can't remember who drew me out, yeah. But it's true, though, that. Like, <laughs> no, Santana single still? No, yeah, like, right now, as, as, as I film this and as I record this, I am. You know what I'm saying? As, yeah, as I record this, I am. It's, um, it's technical, but uh, I, I think, and the same thing with girls. Yeah. The guys that you, the guys that you've spoken to, I'm gonna judge you on that. The guys that you've not spoken to. Mm. Nah, I think it's the reverse for girls. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I think it, I think it's the reverse for girls. You know? I okay. think it's the reverse. Okay. Because like, some girls, you know, you'll speak to them, and they'll be like, oh, so and so is in my DMs, but I curved him, yeah. such and such, and you look at her ex. And you'll be doing the maths, you'll be thinking, nah, but this isn't adding up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this doesn't make no sense. Right. But as a boy, yeah, yeah, if you're doing the right things and you're just not like, you know what I'm saying? Just, just fucking anything that's just moving and walking mm -hmm. and, right. and such and such. And you've got standards, mm -hmm. you've got class. Like, you know what I'm saying? You represent yeah, something, yeah. you stand for something. That's what yeah. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to, so any, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to. In all aspects of your life, yeah. trying to stand for something. <laughs> Acting, <laughs> music, personal life. Personal life, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be smooth. You know what I'm saying? I think that um, girls, girls, sometimes in London, yeah, mm. they, they speak my name, but they put like, they don't put enough respect to my name. Oh. Do you know what I'm saying? Because like, for a musician, yeah. I'm mad reserved. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm mad, like, it's, my, it's like my rule, like, don't mm -hmm. DM girls, don't, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe one or two once in a blue mm -hmm. moon, like, way back in a past <laughs> life. But, like, for the yeah. most part, yeah. that was never me. Clear. So I had to set the record straight, like, you get yeah. what I'm saying? Like, the women that I curve. So you don't approach it as an artist, you approach it almost as, as a regular guy still, in terms yeah. of how you deal with the ladies. Yeah, I think it's worse, because when you're a musician, you, it's nuts, isn't it? Because you could just, things could just go mad wrong instantly. Like, yeah. You, on your, on your mind, I think if you are thinking, 
if you're not thinking, just calm, do whatever you want. But if you are thinking, things can go wrong. Yeah. Because girls, like, if you're just fuck, fucking girls left, right, and center, like, Absolutely. you can end up with like mad child support, like mad, like mad baby mums that you don't yeah. speak to and such, or just like broken relations, like yeah. stuff like that. If you're not and you're doing too much and you're speaking to like yeah. so, and then that's just one side of it. Obviously, America is, is mad in here. Like I'm sure, that, mm -hmm. like you guys yeah. have like some crazy, crazy things going on here. Yeah. You know, you sleep with you sleep with a woman, you wake up drugged, no, no watch. You're on TMZ. You're on, TMZ. <laughs> you're on, you're on TMZ. Right. You know, half naked, like <laughs> like eyeliner on you and that. Like right. I don't know. You know, that's I, when I listen to music from the south, when I listen to like Atlanta and like, City Girls and the stuff like that. That's the that's like, no, I, that's the picture I paint. Like, bro, you go to Atlanta. Like, you go to whatever, go to a strip club, sleep with a girl, like, you're waking up with no watch and no wallet. <laughs> have, I, have, I got, have I got the wrong end and of the... Right. Uh, is that is that a thing? That, or... It happens. It happens a lot. Does that happen? Yeah. That, has that happened to you? Well, not yet. I'm going to keep this... <laughs> <laughs> we keep that a little bit more But you're going to stay in the right path, man. Yes, I have sir. confidence, man. Thank you for Amazing coming. Amazing work, okay. brother. God, we got to finally got a chance to sit down, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you guys. Man. Did you enjoy this? It was cool. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Thank check you out, you out in the uh, UK one day. Yeah, whenever you're in the UK, just let me know, man. Yes, sir, brother. You know, Psycho drama. Get that album, man. Yes, sir. It's yes, a Rap Radar podcast. Hey, yeah.